at the age of 10, I moved to the UAE. And everything was fine, and I was happy. And I slowly started getting older and older, as you do. And I slowly started becoming a teenager, as you do. And I slowly started becoming more and more stressed about the reality of all that life is, all the problems that are out there, all of it. <sighs> I reached the peak of this anxiety, this teenage angst, when I was 17. And I blamed consumerism for it all. This incessant need I had to buy things, to fill my empty life. And I blamed the UAE for it. I did. Because this country is 43 years old, and not much physically dates older than 43 years, and there are malls everywhere. So the UAE became my scapegoat. And I fed this narrative. You know, I was looking for things to say, yes, it is the UAE, right down to my bedroom, which was filled with IKEA furniture. Yep. <laughs> and as I looked around, I realized all of my friends' bedrooms were also filled with IKEA furniture. And then I looked further, and so was the dining room in my house, and so was the living room, and all of a sudden, my whole life felt like an IKEA catalog, <laughs> and I felt lost. And I thought, I need to go find some real stuff. Some stuff with, you know, real stories and history and true, true authenticity. And I decided to go back to my home country of the Netherlands, a place a little bit older than the UAE. I'd completely romanticized the past. Um, and I was looking for things with story and history. And I found these three beautiful things. I went to flea markets and I found this clock. I don't know where it came from. I don't know how old it is exactly, but it has a name on the back. It says Jan de Echte. So I know it belongs to this man, and every morning when I wake up, I kind of think, hmm, this used to wake up this man in the past, and it kind of feels a little, bit, a little bit more real. And then there's this old chair that I found in a secondhand store, and it has all these beautiful scratch marks on it, and when I sit on it, it kind of creaks, and it feels like it was made by human hands and it feels real, and it feels true. And then there's this old crate that I saw at the side of a road, and I said, Mom and Dad, stop the car! I need this crate! And they stopped the car, and I took the crate, and now I use it as my bedside table. <laughs> so there are these three things that, I've, um, that I took back home, my other home of the UAE, and I felt so proud. You know, this clock and this chair and this crate, and I finally felt like I had something real to hold on to, some final authenticity among my other IKEA furniture, and I was so proud of myself. And then a week later, I went shopping with my dad in a mall, <laughs> and I went to one of the newest furniture stores, and as I entered, I was surrounded by vintage furniture. And first I thought, dang it, I just traveled all the way to Holland to go get this stuff, and now it's right here. And then I was really excited, because there was old stuff here. So I was looking at this beautiful old bookcase, and I thought, wow. And then I saw this beautiful leather chair, and I thought, oh, this is just great. And then I asked the person working at the store, I said, where did you get this stuff from? It's all vintage, it's all old. And he said, oh no, we made it at our factory. And I said, wait, you made this at your factory? Yes, at our factory. It turns out I was in a store full of fake vintage furniture. And that was the end of it. Right then, my entire world shattered. Because how could I be sure that the stuff that I had just gotten all the way from Holland wasn't also fake vintage furniture? And I thought, dang it, again, because I should have gone to a place where I could have gotten written authentication, maybe, you know, from an expert and a signature that maybe said that it was real, that it was authentic, and I should have gone and collected stories. But then I thought about that, and then I realized signatures can be forged, and expertise can be faked, and stories can be constructed. Stories can be constructed. All of the things that I just showed you, the clock, the chair, and the crate, I made them all. They were all actually from the IKEA catalog. And I spent uh, a, lot, a lot of time, maybe too much time, sandpapering and uh, scrubbing these things and making them look old so that I could fool you, so that you could feel the pain that I felt when I realized that I couldn't be sure of anything. 
It's a thing called patina, when you make things look old. And um, as I did more research about this, oh, look, weathered gray, an antique walnut <laughs> paint that I used. Um, right, there's a thing called patina, and it's a layer of rust and dust on top of old things. And I found out that in the past, families with old money, they used to not clean their jewelry because they wanted that layer of old so that it would distinguish them from families with new money who had shiny, bright jewelry. And as a result, the families with new money, they would fake patina on their jewelry. And then I realized, oh man, this construction, it's not new. It's not 2015. It's not the UAE. It's been happening all along, constructing stories. And, and all of a sudden, I was spiraling into insanity as I realized I can never really be sure of anything. And my brain felt like it was going to explode. I was trying to think and find something, something that I could hold on to, something that was maybe real, something that was authentic. I realized the only thing I can really be certain of is this moment right now. And that is it. But realizing the rest of it is IKEA furniture didn't discredit the world for me. Everything is kind of constructed in one way or another. But me, at the age of 17, thinking that I could find true authenticity, grasping and grasping for something to hold on to, in that, I was the least authentic I've ever been because I was stopping myself saying, wait, is that authentic? Is that real? And not going with the moment at all. I was constructing myself, but most of all, constraining myself. But realizing that there is nothing I can really know, realizing there is no authenticity, it means realizing there is nothing I can grasp. And so I'm free to be. And maybe that is the only authenticity there really is. Thank you.